With his leadership and clutch play and command of the game, DJ fit in perfectly on the Celtic team of the 80s. Johnson won two championship rings in Boston and another in Seattle. And he earned a reputation as a player who could provide anything his team needed to win. Loose run down by Dennis Johnson on the dribble. He got past right. Dennis comes in with a field goal and he's fouled. Dennis Johnson hustles his way into a Milwaukee turnover. Crashes out of bounds and gets it done. Dennis Johnson with a steal. He's off to the races. He is the single greatest player, not in the Hall of Fame. The most embarrassing admission in the Hall of Fame right now today is the fact that Dennis Johnson is not in the Hall of Fame. But being overlooked for the Hall of Fame is nothing new for Dennis Johnson. He rode the bench in high school, was unrecruited by most colleges, and always faced doubts about his ability. Everything just wasn't handed down or passed out or dished out to me. If I would have listened to everybody who told me I couldn't have made it, I would have quit then. The prospects for a standout career appeared slim for Johnson after Seattle chose him in the second round of the 1976 draft. But by his second season, he had taken over as floor leader in the Sonics, an exciting team on the rise. 22 points for Dennis. Led by their young point guard, Seattle reached the finals two straight years. And in 1979, D.J. dominated the series with an MVP performance, reminiscent of the game's all-time greats. That's 32 points for Dennis. He was like a, uh, a Walt Frazier type of guard in a sense that he could run a team and rebound. Dennis Johnson will rebound. And defend. Dennis Johnson right there with him. The Sonics won the 1979 finals in five games. But their reign would be short-lived as retirements, injuries, and bickering would tear the team apart. And some pointed to DJ as being part of the reason for the dissension. Uh, as a coach, uh, my job is to, to let him know that, you know, we function as a team. So we, we lose as a team. And we also win as a team. In 1980, the Sonics traded Johnson to Phoenix. There he continued to attain individual honors, being named to the All-Star team and the All-Defensive team. But questions remained about whether he could peacefully coexist within a team structure. Those questions came to a head when the Suns traded DJ to Boston in 1983 for journeyman center Rick Roby. When DJ first came here, I didn't know how to react because I didn't know how he was going to play. I knew he was a great player, but I didn't know if, you know, if we'd be able to get along on the court. Bird, what a pass from Dennis Johnson. He thread the needle. Oh, open is Dennis Johnson. And the Celtics are rolling right now. DJ answered all his critics, meshing perfectly with the Celtics and proving to be a consummate team player. Other guards in, who came to Boston were intimidated by playing with Bird and Parrish and McHale and Maxwell because they were never sure, oh, am I supposed to pass to them? If I have a shot, is it okay for me to take it? Dennis Johnson never had a problem about self-esteem on the basketball court. If he had a shot, he took it. Johnson often had open shots at crunch time, and he made opponents pay with his clutch shooting. Dennis Johnson, who is simply marvelous, hit the last basket of the game. Double on Parrish, leaving Dennis Johnson open. For years and years and years, everyone says we're going to double off of Dennis Johnson, and then Dennis Johnson usually answers the bell. Even in the NBA Finals, usually billed as Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson, DJ often played a deciding role as he was overlooked again and left open for critical shots. And he gets the pass. Goes into the lane. Jump pass back out to DJ. DJ throws on the top. It's gone. And no time left. It's all over. Johnson was a key ingredient on the Celtics championship teams in 1984 and 86. He seemed to be playing the game on a higher cerebral level. And nowhere was this more apparent than his on-court chemistry with Larry Bird. That's a set play off the backboard. What a beauty! Johnson bounces it to Bird. That was a set play. They were in, in sync when they played. Another great feed, Dennis Johnson to Larry Bird. I can't tell you the number of times when he and Larry would make eye contact. Larry's guy would have his head turned, and DJ would just throw that ball right by his defender's ear, and Larry would just catch it and lay it in before the guy knew what even happened. And now there's a steal by Bird underneath 
The most vivid example of the Bird DJ connection came in the 1987 playoffs against Detroit. It's often referred to as Bird Steel, but many still marvel at Johnson's brilliant instincts. Why is he there to get that pass? Bird made a great steal, but DJ made a great cut. And it all happened in, in, in within a split second. As Bird is going to get it this way, He's already reacted like he's in Bird's mind that he's going to steal. I mean, I was like, oh, and then boom, I win. Just when I got it, I'd seen a, a white jersey streaking down uh, towards a basket, and I turned, and it was DJ, of course. Bird steals it! Johnson, layup, Boston, one second left! Oh, my, the pipe is going crazy! He's a big play man. He, he makes um, big plays when you need them. Battling his way to basketball greatness, Dennis Johnson earned respect at the highest level. You really don't know how good a guy is until he plays on your team. DJ is one of the best players, or the best player I ever played with. When Johnson retired, Celtic president Red Auerbach presented him with a watch. Red said he actually had two watches made. He sent one of them to the Suns for letting the Celtics have Dennis in exchange for Rick Roby. No question who got the better end of that deal, as DJ finished his career with five All-Star appearances and five selections to the All-Defensive team.